Industrial Annihilation was recently announced as a new spiritual successor to Total Annihilation and sequel to Planetary Annihilation, promising a next generation RTS with near infinite replayability that's designed to redefine the RTS genre. Those are some bold claims, but as the creators of Planetary Annihilation, a game that sold over 3 million units and was one of the most successful video games ever on Kickstarter, I believe the second most backed ever, only just beaten by Stormgate, that'd have to be a sure thing, right? Well, I wouldn't be so sure, and I'm not. There's a lot of bizarre history with this company and the games they've worked on, and once you hear the whole story, I'm not sure you'll be wanting to put down a pre-order for Industrial Annihilation just yet. I'm not on board with this game, though I would love to be proven wrong. I've got nothing against the people making it, but I do want to make sure that people know what they're getting themselves into with making a purchase here. Because yeah, on the surface, and to the untrained eye, there's nothing overly offensive about Industrial Annihilation. So, to understand my point, we need a short history lesson. Planetary Annihilation was released in 2014 after a very successful Kickstarter campaign. It aimed to be a truly innovative spin on RTS, and to their credit, it was certainly different. The scale was large, with games incorporating multiple planets, with maps being the surfaces of those planets themselves. You could build hundreds and thousands of robots to duke it out across landmasses, the airspace above, and the galaxy itself. The concept was unique, but the execution left a lot to be desired. The actual usability of the planets as RTS maps struggled thanks to the camera orientation not being locked, a side effect of being able to move around in 3D space, and having every map not have any corners, edges, or any kind of end made playing them an exercise in futility where getting your bearings quickly was basically impossible. Though the little picture-in-picture -picture camera did certainly help a bit. Plus, the units were really, really sterile, and because of the single faction, there was just no variety at all, making every game feel the same. It wasn't until Titans that some units became vaguely interesting, but only because they tapped on our primal desires of being impressed when we see something really, really big. Unfortunately, Titans brought its own problems. While it improved on the game in basically every way, it was the out-of-game issues that brought this one down. You may not remember this when it all went down, but back then, people were pissed. Essentially, what happened was Planetary Annihilation had been getting regular updates and patches since its launch, which addressed people's concerns, fixed bugs, and just did normal patch stuff. All good, no worries. But then they announced Titans, a standalone expansion that would not only bring a lot of new content to the game, but was a de facto replacement of the original making it the only version to receive new updates and patches going forward, essentially leaving the original Planetary Annihilation stranded in a dead-end build, aside from bug fixes and engine updates and such. Now, before you say anything, yes, Titans was given for free for any original Kickstarter backers, and yes, it was also offered at a 66% discount to anyone who owned Planetary Annihilation already, who weren't a Kickstarter backer but they still had to pay the difference of the launch price of 40 US dollars. And eventually this discount increased to 90%. And it's fair to say, well, people were not happy about this, claiming the developers were moving to releasing a new product before finishing the first, and charging for features that were expected in the base game. But paying 5 or 15 bucks or whatever, it's not a steep price, right? So I just don't understand why Uber Entertainment, the developers of the game, didn't give it out for free. To everyone. I mean, look at No Man's Sky. The community sentiment is insane for that game now, thanks to all of the free updates it's done, and it's clearly led to many, many more sales. Forcing a paid upgrade left a sour taste in a lot of people's mouths. And it's hard to forget about them when the same leadership team who made those decisions comes back with a new game now asking for more community investment. And yeah, I know game development is expensive, and a lot's happened since 2015, but when you're flaunting how many millions of copies you've sold, and how much money you raised on Kickstarter for Industrial Annihilation, it feels weird that you're still asking for more money. And believe it or not, the story doesn't end there. 
you may have realised that Titans came out in 2015, and Industrial Annihilation was only just announced recently in 2023. Also, the company name is different, and who the hell is Star Theory? What gives? What's been happening over the past 8 years? Well, I'll tell you. Kerbal Space Program 2. No, I am not making that up. After Planetary Annihilation was released, Uber Entertainment tried their hand at Kickstarter again with human resources, which was a pretty interesting looking RTS that I was intrigued by, but unfortunately the funding goal just wasn't anywhere close to being met, and the community were not happy about Uber starting another Kickstarter while their first game was still in a questionable state, and after it had made a lot of money. So they cancelled the project and moved on to Titans. Sometime after that, and after Titans had launched, Uber signed on to the KSP2 project with Private Division, 2K's smaller publishing label. They renamed their company to Star Theory to better align themselves with the project, and avoid any illegal funny business with a certain other company, and yeah, things were trucking along. Nate Simpson, who'd had experience on Supreme Commander and Planetary Annihilation, seen here in the Human Resources Kickstarter video, was the project lead, and sometime during development, he, along with much of the staff at Star Theory, moved to a new studio under the Private Division label. It's not clear exactly what happened, but clearly some shenanigans went down, causing 2K to lose faith in the management of Star Theory, and leading them to decide to poach almost all of their staff. Sounds like a dick move on the surface, and it probably is, but who knows what happened behind closed doors. Then, well, COVID happened, and Star Theory, after the loss of most of their staff, and unable to secure any new development deals, closed up shop for good. And now, well, that management team is back, and they're back with a new company, Galactic Annihilation. Yes, that's the company name, it's not any sort of game. So connecting all the history together, you can understand why I'm hesitant to put any faith in Industrial Annihilation. There are simply too many red flags. There's the raw quality of Planetary Annihilation. Frankly, I just don't think it was very good, especially in comparison to other Total Annihilation successes like Bar, which are free, truly community driven, and available right now. There's their decisions with Titans, leaving people who didn't want to buy their new and improved version in the dust, and moving content and updates that people were expecting into a brand new product. Then there's whatever happened with KSP2. Whatever it was, it just doesn't inspire a lot of confidence. And uh, how could I forget, there's the whole failed Kickstarter with human resources, and the investing with industrial annihilation now. Again, I know game dev is expensive, and I'm certain that there are facts we don't know that would help clear this up. But you're telling me the second most successful RTS Kickstarter in history, and the most successful game on Kickstarter ever at the time, that went to sell over 3 million copies, as you state in your investment page, didn't make enough money to fund a new project on its own? And on that note, the biggest red flag is this whole investment support strategy. Industrial Annihilation began its life in the public eye on an investment platform called Start Engine. At the get-go, let's make this perfectly clear, this is not a Kickstarter, it's not an Indiegogo, it's an investment platform for startup companies. Because you're not actually supporting the game directly, you are investing in its developer, in this case, Galactic Annihilation. As such, the minimum investment is 500 US dollars, yet there's no information on what you're really getting as a shareholder, as the replies to comments say, we are not allowed to comment on our future plans or make future projections. You're simply putting money in this company with no guarantees on any future returns. And I mean, I guess that is stock trading in a nutshell. And sure, that's fine, I guess. But a lot of the wording they use on this page feels off, and I just can't tell who they're targeting with this. On one hand, it's got gamer speak and in game items as rewards for investing certain amounts. And on the other hand, it makes insane claims about mass market potential of 3.2 billion gamers and 10 million plus RTS fans, as if you're able to capture a significant percentage of either of those numbers. If you know anything about games, you know that those numbers are complete bollocks, and only included to look impressive to people who wouldn't know any better. The ones who also wouldn't care about unique in-game mech commander skins and exclusive betas. I don't know man, the vibes, they're, they're just not here. They're also accepting pre-orders through their website, for which there is no reason to purchase right now, you should not do that. 
and there's other little things like how they've reused clips from the planetary annihilation pitch video in the new industrial annihilation one which yeah like there's nothing inherently wrong with that but it just looks cheap and in that same industrial annihilation video they make claims about planetary annihilation's built-in fan base and how it's going strong for nearly 10 years here are some of the comments from that inbuilt fanbase. Are these the people you're talking about? All right, look, I'm not trying to shit on these guys. I'm sure they're nice people who just want to make a good game, and I totally respect that. But I don't think this whole pitch passes the sniff test, especially considering the history of the C-suite involved and some of the questionable actions taken with Planetary Annihilation and their other crowdfunding campaigns over the years. And I'm not the only one thinking this. The announcement thread on r RTS is full of people sharing their stories of being burned by planetary annihilation. So I guess what I'm saying with this video, and the point of it all together, is to do a bit of research and ensure that you do your due diligence. If you then choose to hand over your money at that point, then fair enough, more power to you. But I've heard a lot of people be blindly excited about industrial annihilation, so I wanted to get this out there as a bit of a PSA. It does feel like this is all the worst parts of modern indie gaming coming to a head here. I mean, how many levels of pre-purchase can we have until there's an actual game that we can play? We've got investing with a CGI trailer using assets from a 10 year old game, pre-orders with a vague early access release date, then early access itself which was always meant as a form of crowdfunding to get a game developed. <sighs> it does make me respect games that simply come out and can be bought and played on the spot. Alright, I think we're done here. I hope this video didn't come across too mean-spirited or negative. I'm really just trying to get out some facts so people can make their own decisions. Personally, I hope Industrial Annihilation is a fantastic game that redefines RTS and shuts me down completely and shows that I was completely misplaced with my fears. And if that's the case, I will certainly be back to tell you exactly that. Thanks very much for watching, there are links in the description where you can read up on what I've covered here on your own if you wish. Big ups to my Patreon supporters and YouTube members who keep the lights on here, you can join for as little as a dollar a month and you'll join legends like Takayo, Bad Ghosts, Sean, Gracebert4, George, Nedas, John Kaiser, King Thickums, Pavel, Bram, Christian, Dan, Bishop's Arch, Orion, Das Rufkin, Cameron, and my Paladins, Johnny, Marika, Age of Cause, Joe Tank, and Imperian. Thanks very much everyone, and I'll see you all in the next one.